anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink. Because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will truly not lose his reward. Thank you, Marianne. I don't know where she's at, the sacristan, but thank you for the cup of water. Where's she at? Salute. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink, because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. First, let me introduce myself, and then let's dive into just that phrase, which I believe is really loaded with a lot of significance and a lot of truth uh, that will help us grow. So one, my name is Father Carlos Jose Rojas. I'm a priest of the Diocese of St. Petersburg. I've been ordained 18 years. Uh, in 18 years, I've been in nine different assignments. Uh, the bishop says that I have a certain set of skills that help communities. So every time there's a trouble somewhere, they sent me, I do my work in the spirit and a community is brought to a good place and then they send me somewhere else. As a matter of fact, eight years ago, I think eight or nine, I was here asking for financial help for another parish when I was at St. Joseph in West Tampa. Now I am in St. Rita in Date City, about 45 minutes, 50 minutes northeast. Have you ever been in Date City? Raise your hand. Ah, good. You've discovered that beautiful treasure. It's a small little quainty town with a nice downtown. Don't blink if you drive by downtown. You will miss it. It only takes three lights and that's it. That, that's our little downtown uh, historical place. St. Rita was established in 1913, 110 years and more ago by the Benedictine monks of St. Leo Abbey. I'm about nine minutes from the university. Um, I, I teach there. I'm not actually now I'm a student. I'm taking classes there. Um, but Saint, uh, the, the area of St. Rita and Date City is, uh, is growing. Now, our church, our church sitting capacity is this much, 250. And when we open the curtain for the social hall, it gives you another 250. So this is it. This is my church. And uh, so far, it was enough, except that now the community is growing. The overflow from uh, Lutz the overflow from Land Lakes, the overflow Wesley Chapter, uh, Wesley Chapel, uh, Wesley Chapel is really catching up to us. There's an estimate of 10,051 family units that will be built in the next four or five years. So that's going to have a great impact in our community. Uh, and part of what I'm here is to ask for the financial help as we prepare for the upcoming flood of people who will be seeking. Uh, the gospel, the sacraments, and the, the needs that our church provides. Now, we're also a mission because in San Rita, historically, we've been serving the Hispanic community. Back then, it was the migrant workers who worked the orange field. All the orange fields are now dead and being turned down into buildings and houses. Uh, but it still continues to be the great mission of San Rita to serve the Hispanic in that area, in the northeast. So it, 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 it is seven parishes. So the, where they're Hispanic, within seven parish boundaries, they come to St. Rita to be ministers. So the work that I do is multiply by seven, uh, and therefore a mission that is in great need of help. You don't have to go to, too far. You don't have to go to another continent. Just drive 45 minutes, and there you have a mission trip. Uh, but not just... St. Rita, and I'm asking here for your help. And by the way, I was reading in the bulletin, it says that 10% of what you give today uh, will go to St. Rita. So thank you, and be extra generous in the collection today, so more will go there. And also, if you would like to give specifically to St. Rita, you could go to the website of St. Timothy, and in the giving boxes, you find the one that says Mission Co-op. So I'm here to ask for financial help, but I'm here to also preach the gospel, the good news, Let's go back to that gospel. Anyone who gives you a cup of what? Hmm. Uh, you're paying attention. Good. Is this tap water? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you will surely not lose your reward. It doesn't say what type of water, if it's Sefferzild or Date City uh, uh, or Lutz. 
because you belong to Christ, I mean, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. So now let's switch. Let's go deeper into the word. I found interested that there's a promise, amen, I say to you, that's a guarantee. Jesus Christ is promising this. But what follows is stated via negativa. It says, will surely not lose his reward. You will think it will say we'll receive a reward, but it's stated differently in a very negative way, which opens up to the possibility that perhaps we have not thought of that one can lose the reward. We can lose our reward. What's the ultimate reward? Salvation. And it's salvation not because we give cups of water to people, but salvation because Christ Jesus has earned it, has given his own cup of blood that we may have the salvation in Christ Jesus. But that cup, a cup that we will drink from the liturgy of the word to the liturgy of the Eucharist, we will be drinking of that cup but we can lose that reward. And not a reward for our good merits, but the merits of Christ Jesus that we're open to receive. There's something of a mystery here that I would like to bring to the light. That somehow, something happens within us. That when you give a cup of, of what? Good job. <laughs> the kids are paying attention. That's good. When you give a, keep, a, a cup of what? Oh, now I'm more paying attention. Good. To someone, something happens. And it's not just the benefit of the one receiving the cup, satisfying their thirst and their needs, but something of your own needs are satisfied. Something of giving a cup of water to someone that opens you. It, it creates this openness, this disposition, this receptivity to be able to more fully drink of the cup of salvation. It sounds something like it is in giving that we receive. There's something of a mystery that Christ has really given his life to teach us, literally, by him giving his life so that we may have life. And in doing so, he's teaching us something very powerful. That you must tap on your own thirst for Christ. And when you do, and from that thirst you give to someone else, it opens you up to drink of the cup of salvation. You see, each one of us thirsts. I call it the existential thirst. The mere fact you exist, you exist with a thirst. And a thirst that only God can satisfy. And it's a thirst that only can be fulfilled in the manner in which you give of yourself to others. It's a thirst that comes when you recognize that the thirst in you is the thirst of Christ for you. Like Mother Teresa and her beautiful experience of the Christ who says to her, I thirst. I thirst for you. And somehow when we begin to drink of the thirst of Christ for us, and we allow ourselves to immerse in that very scary place that we long and thirst for more, and we find it in Christ Jesus, we begin to overflow with the cup of salvation towards others. And therefore it is in giving to others to drink of your own experience of being loved by God that you open yourself for the ultimate reward of the cup of salvation. It's quite a mystery. Let's just put it in more chewable terms. Recently, we went through the hurricane. And if God allows something like that, it's because through his work in something greater. I hope you've been praying about it. Okay, Lord, what is the greater good do you desire to derive out of this for my own family and for myself? One of the typical things that happen when a hurricane comes is we all go home, lock ourselves, and stay with what really matters. Your loved ones, your children 
or spouse. And when that happens, we recognize nothing else really matters. I may lose my house, I may lose my car, I may lose my job. Who cares? As long as I don't lose this. Your child, your grandchild, your spouse, your loved ones. You see, when you come to, to remember what really matters in life, you're really tapping on that thirst you have, a thirst for love and to love, a thirst for something that goes beyond this world, and it's the salvation of your own family, of your own children. Do you love them so much that you desperately hunger to share with them eternally, eternal life? That's why you're here. You're here to bring your children, your family, your loved ones to drink of the cup of salvation because in doing so, you begin to experience the fullness of life here and to come eternally, the cup of salvation. And when hurricanes come, one of the greatest gifts if we remember what really matters. And what really matters is you pouring yourself in love not just by providing, often going out into the world to provide, restrict you from truly giving yourself, which is what they need the most, your love. And not just them, you need their love. You were created for love. You have a void. And it's in the matter you give that cup of your own thirst in love for your own loved ones that you receive the love of Christ and in doing so drink of the cup of salvation into eternal life. It's a beautiful principle. Summarize it in, it is in giving that we receive. It is in dying to self that we experience life. It is giving of a cup of water to someone in need that we're able to fully drink of the cup of salvation. So in many ways, I come here to ask for a cup of water to drink. A cup of what? But in a way, what I'm offering you is for you to drink upon your own cup of thirst in Christ Jesus and to overflow in the love you receive of Christ to give, to give to your family, and to give to our larger family of the church only 45 minutes away at St. Rita. I thank you for allowing me to drink of my own cup and to prompt you to drink of your own cup. May together we go from the liturgy of the word to the liturgy of the Eucharist to drink of the ultimate cup, the cup of salvation. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward.